Hey everybody! Um, today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the Colab uh, notebook authoring platform. Uh, and so here I've opened up the, the chapter one file and I am going to go through it and let's first take a look at this the, the setup here. So um, you'll see there's a number of different things. Remember, if you've just opened up the notebook from the course web page, there will be a button here that says Save and Drive. Make sure you do that, and to make sure you have your own copy of the file. So uh, what you'll see here, uh, here at the top, there's plus code, plus text. Um, the reason why there are these two buttons here is because the way that programming in Jupyter Notebooks written in Python works, right? So Python is the programming language. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks is this structure of how the, the notebook looks. Um, if you, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing code and text so that you can tell a story at the same time as you run your code. Um, so one of the benefits of this system is that you can really create a, a paragraph uh, or um, table of content structure that goes along with your code, <clears throat> which organizes it in a really nice way. Um, so all along the way here, there's really only two different types of cells. So we're, we're, we're going to be typing in, and it's not one long Word document. Instead, it's a bunch of different cells. Here you can see this rectangle here, and this is one cell. And if I double click on it, you can see that this is actually a text type of cell where the text includes something that looks like this, which ends up getting displayed in this form. So um, you may be used to working with Word, which is a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get type of uh, platform. You start typing, and when you type in that certain way, uh, that's exactly what you see. And you do this modification of uh, your text, and it changes the way the, the text looks um, directly on the, the screen. This is slightly different in that this is called markdown language, in that when you type different things, hello, and let's put some stars, bold, and italic. So what you can see here is that we are typing just in text, but we're including maybe this hashtag, which tells uh, Python that you, or tells Markdown that you want a section header. Um, I've written this later, but might as well do this now. A subsection comes when you put two pound signs. That gives us a subsection, and we can talk about a sub subsection here. And these are the ways that in your table of contents, we can't see that here because this is this is one cell, and normally you would put this in a couple of different cells. But you can see here these this text gets translated to this formatting over here. So when we go through this file, we've got a whole bunch of these cells, and different cells have different styles to them based on what people have written, 
Here you can see this is a sub subsection because it has three pound signs. And you, you're also able to type in bold and italic without highlighting and changing to bold or italic. All right, so when you see here that we'd like to say maybe add a text cell, that creates one cell here where we can type and we can add to the narrative of what's happening in this style. Uh, if you used Mathematica, this should feel rather comfortable to you. Uh, if you haven't seen this, this maybe is a little bit different, um, especially because this allows you to add text comments that aren't actually commented parts of code. All right, so let me go back and put this the way it was. I can copy, I can select all these things, I can remove them, right, and it's not there. But I'm actually going to leave them in there in case somebody wants to play around with it themselves. All right, so we've talked about these text cells which help to organize our um, files from top to bottom. Uh, but here's our first view of some code. Um, let me come back to this later. This is going to be some code that's going to be at the top of every single one of these notebooks. And I'd like to first talk about coding in Python before we talk about what this is saying. All right. So if let's say you want to run a cell. So let me click on a, add the code. All right. When I add a code, it has this little play button here. Um, which you can click. Uh, so if I do 2 plus 4 and I push the play button, it's going to, that's written in Python code. That, that text, which is some code, is sent to the back end, the part of Python that's actually doing the compiling, the understanding of the commands and it will then send output back to the front. It doesn't always give output, which we'll see and might get a little frustrating, but we'll have to we'll have to work around that. But what you can see here is this 2 plus 4 was sent in and out came the answer 6. Okay? If we didn't want to click the play button, we can just use shift enter. So if I'm here in the cell, and I don't click, but I use Shift-Enter, that does the same thing that it did before, which was to send the information into the kernel, into the programming language. It does all the processing, and it sends the information back to you. All right, here's another example. If we, It's saying, here's, here's another type of thing we can do. We're going to type in print hello. So this is using a function, print. And what print will do is always output the whatever is put it in the string. So I run this, and I, it, it says out hello. OK, that's fine. It's kind of sometimes the first thing you ever do in many programming language. You write hello world. And the computer says, hello world. Um, as you play around, you can, uh, you can get, you, you, you'll probably use a print command just to get information from uh, the computer as we go along. But we'll go into that more in more detail later. <clears throat> OK, so. Um, When you're running the code, sometimes you have to tell Python that you want you you need to you need to basically give it some information so it knows what you're talking about. So many of so these are called either packages or modules, and they get imported 
into, if you tell Python what to do, you say, import these. It's like when you're in the matrix and you plug something into your head and now you know karate, right? This is the type of thing where you tell, uh, you tell Python, I want you to know NumPy and or SciPy and you send, you say, load this information into your memory and then it knows it. So all of the commands and all of the uh, key things in those packages, in those modules, are now part of the programming, uh, the programming process. So if you look at the top of, the, of this page, and at the top of every single one of the notebooks that we have for this class, you'll say this exact. You'll see this exact same code. And what it's doing, this breaks it down and it says, "All right, see if you can import pint. If you can import pint, great, import it. Otherwise, you have to install it. You have to go and go look in the dictionary, find this." Uh, this pint module and bring it in and install it and then import all that information in. So you have to go search out uh, out in the world. So let's run it and let's see what happens. Let's see what it says. So it's going to a particular place where all these things are are hosted. It downloads this information and it's then it installs those packages. So now this information is now available to Python when it's uh, when when you're working. All right, and here's so we we had to install Pint because actually, more importantly, is the package that was created by the book's author for this class, and that's called Mod Senpai, just like uh, just like the title of the book. So if we run this, it's going to import all of the important pieces, all the important definitions, everything that you need to, to run a number of the specialty commands that have been created for this class. So every time you open your, your file, all of the definitions are forgotten. So you'll need to re-import these every time you open up your file. And when you do that, then all of that knowledge is available to Python and you can use it in your uh, files. All right, so let's stop here for now and I will talk to you later. Bye.